My name is, is Tony Fan. Uh, like Elise mentioned, uh, I'm a console SME uh, covering the APJ region uh, and uh, based in Sydney. I'm going to present today on service to service, service across Kubernetes and clouds, but let's first take a step back and quickly cover what console is about. Now, think of it as a services networking platform, you know, where you can provide consistent security across your network by connecting any service across any runtime or cloud. There's, there's, there's uh, three pillars that we're going to talk about here today. Uh, there's actually four pillars. Uh, we're going to cover the three, which, you know, starts off with discovery. So console provides a service directory that enables you to register and discover and connect and monitor services across your environments. This is the first step for console uh, to, to act like a central registry and be the source of truth for all your applications, but also know, you know, the health of them uh, through built-in health checks. Uh, the other pillar is uh, service mesh, and we consider it a, a global service mesh that provides consistent encryption and authorization for services to services, as well as observability, resilience, and uh, well, resilience for application traffic. You know, the service mesh uses identity based on networking to authenticate service and authorize communication. Automation, lastly, is often used to, you know, uh, reduce the time to deploy applications and eliminate manual processes by automating complex networking tasks. There's also, like I mentioned before, the fourth pillar is uh, focused around API Gateway, but today we're going to focus predominantly on console service mesh capability and what that offers and what it what the, what it, what it can do to help enterprises uh, securely connect services across clouds and across different platforms now before we dive into uh, some of those key key concepts I spoke about um, quickly covering some common use cases that a service mesh has to offer and usually we we talk about these these four, um, and usually customers adopt, you know, uh, service mesh for one of these reasons. Um, there are numerous others and other use cases that I haven't covered here, but these are the typical ones. So security, you know, a common use case for leveraging a service mesh is to achieve a zero trust model. And in a zero trust model, applications require identity-based access to ensure that communication within is authenticated with TLS certificates and encrypted in transit. You know, when it comes to traffic management, you know, another use case is for the ability to control traffic. For example, blue-green deployments are easily implemented to safely roll out new upgrades of an application without risking service interruption. You now, first you expose only a small subset of users to the new version, validate it, then you can, you know, proceed to release it to all instances in production. You know, another scenario is around testing or, or chaos engineering in production scenarios with the ability to, you know, do things like test or experiments um, to introduce faults uh, in order to improve the robustness of deployments and, and instances and services. Observability is key, you know, thirdly, like yeah, observability to services with service level visibility, tracing and monitoring abilities. Some of the key capabilities of service, service mesh drastically, um, oh, sorry, dramatically improve visibility as well as your ability to troubleshoot and mitigate instances. For example, if one of the service in the architecture becomes a bottleneck, the common way to handle it is through retries. But you can worsen the bottleneck due to timeouts. With you know, something like a service mesh, you can easily break the circuit to failed services to disable non-functioning replicas all instances and keep the API responsive. So again, these, these are the common ones. Um, let's go and have a look at, you know, traditional approaches to handling traffic. And this is more typical for microservices architectures. So traditionally, uh, we see a lot of customers that leverage an API gateway that will route the incoming request to respective service and apply different handling logic depending on the request. Now, this is a valid uh, pattern and, and architecture. What we see here, though, is often this being overused, right? You know, the primary function on an API gateway is to handle requests and return the, the, the reply from the service back to the client. 
API gateways are often used to accept north-south traffic. Uh, that's the paradigm. North-south traffic is often, you know, networking traffic that enters or exits a data center or VPC. You know, they are typically deployed alongside a load balancer to ensure that the traffic is is healthy and available to you know the instances. Um, usually, this can add additional footprint, latency, hops, complexity, and costs. Now, when you introduce a service mesh, something like console, you know, its responsibility or it's it's responsible for keeping track of the services and the health status. You know, IP addresses, traffic routing, ensuring all traffic between services was, you know, secure as well. Unlike API gateways, a service mesh will track all the registered services lifecycle and ensure requests are routed to healthy instances of a service. It reduces the, the load balance of footprint as routing responsibilities are handled in a kind of decentralized manner. Now, service mesh is per, you know, primarily used for handling east-west traffic or more direct traffic. You know, typically as well, we see when it comes to service meshes, um, they are commonly installed or, or very Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes centric, right? And this makes it challenging for many enterprises to adopt uh, and scale as well. So either enterprises uh, you know, have non-Kubernetes workloads or they're not ready and they're still on that journey towards uh, microservices. It's also challenging for those that want to achieve service-to-service -service across multiple Kubernetes clusters or want to achieve service-to-service -service across clouds. And this is where we're going to focus on a little bit uh, in the webinar and snapshot today. You know, how do we leverage all those benefits that service mesh offers traffic management uh, observability and security uh, across multi uh, kubernetes clusters across uh, multiple clouds but also across different workload types like virtual machines or how do we you know connect to external services so we want to take those and you know provide this global federated uh, service mesh so if we look about, you know, if we look into, you know, how do we enable uh, service to service across clusters? So with console, you know, we have this control plane uh, that can essentially treat Kubernetes clusters as clients. And what happens there is it doesn't matter if we have one cluster or we have multiple clusters, we can deploy services. And you can see this example, a dashboard service and a backend service called counting spread across two different clusters. And what happens here is the dashboard service can talk to the upstream uh, counting service uh, east to west without going via an API gateway, right? Um, so it has direct access or communicates directly and securely through MTLS uh, to the backend service um, that sits across a different cluster. Now, if you had a third cluster where you introduced a version two, you can apply some of the traffic management capabilities to, you know, potentially reroute or route, you know, 20% or 10% of traffic while you test uh, to that use of some different cluster. And again, this could be three clusters. This could be many clusters, right? Uh, this is something that, you know, console offers as part of its capability, right? Now we can take this a step further and we can introduce uh, multiple clouds. And what we do here is we can introduce uh, a gateway called, or called a mesh gateway where that will handle uh, essentially uh, facilitate the communication between, you know, uh, data center boundaries. And this can be between, you know, cloud boundaries um, or it would be within data centers if you, you're trying to achieve or within a VPC trying to achieve um or solve challenges like overlapping address spaces across different vpcs and so forth but in this scenario we have two clusters that are spread across two clouds uh the dashboard service or the front end service in one cluster that can communicate securely again through mtls directly to the counting service uh this can be across the internet again it's fully encrypted right so this is service to service across clouds Again, we can apply the same or similar traffic management capabilities um, uh, in the same scenario. So I'm going to show you a, 
quick demonstration of a few things that are put together around um, how console helps um, service to service across multiple Kubernetes clusters, but also across clouds uh, that include external services as well. So in my demonstration, I have two cloud providers that I've deployed console into. Uh, the first one on the left being AWS with an EKS cluster and um, the other one being GK, oh, GCP with the GKE cluster. And I have a few services in each. Um, in the EKS cluster, I have a API gateway ingress gateway. I have a front end service, a public API that needs to talk to the product service and the product service needs to talk to a Postgres database, which actually sits on the EC2 VM um, outside, well, obviously outside the Kubernetes cluster. Now, on the other side, I have um, a payment service that needs to talk to an external register service that runs on memory store. So this is actually a GCP provided uh, managed service uh, offering uh, called memory store that is running my Redis instance. And we leverage a terminating gateway to connect to that service. Uh, you can think of it like an egress gateway. Now, you can provide TLS or you can even pr provide MTLS from that terminating gateway to that external service as long as that external su service supports TLS. Um, and this application, uh, it's, uh, application is called HashiCups. You might have heard of this before. Uh, all needs to communicate with each other in order to function, right? So the public service actually needs to talk to the products API, but also needs to talk to the payments API. And you can see there that the payments API is on a different cluster that sits entirely in a different cloud, um, but they all connect to, to uh, each other and functioning as an app um, east to west. Um, so let me give you a demonstration of that. Um, this is my console instance, uh, this is the console UI. Uh, with the GCP side, I've already deployed uh, the Redis service, which is called the payments queue. And if I can click into it, you can see that this is my Redis service there speaking on uh, uh, 6379. And we can see that it's healthy through the console health checks as well. But that's already been deployed. There's a terminating gateway that's been deployed and, and that service is linked to it. On my AWS side, uh, if I go back to services here, I don't have any of the front end or public uh, or product service. I do have the, the EC2 Postgres database already deployed in. You can see that there as well. So I'm going to deploy the rest of the services and that's going to essentially communicate with each other securely. And then we can have a look at what that is. So at the moment I'm going, uh, this is the service exposed through the gateway. And I can see it's not functioning at the moment because there's no front end service uh, deployed. So just in the interest of time, I have pre-deployed a few things, uh, but obviously it's missing a few components. So let's go ahead and deploy that. And then we can see uh, the service come online. There are two clouds, uh, one in AWS, one in GCP, and they are federated together. So just to show you, I do have console deployed. So this is on the EKS cluster in AWS. Um, similar to what you can see in the UI, you see some of these services in the UI. I do not have any other services deployed. Let me just do that now. And as I do that, we'll flip back to the UI quickly and we can see start to see some of the services come online. A few others will come online shortly. Uh, if I go into it uh, while I wait for that, we'll see a few things come up. Uh, we'll eventually see some, some telemetry come through as well and a, a topology view there. But a few instances are coming online and when they do come online, I'll better show you the UI. So again, let me quickly show you uh, the services are coming online. Let's check the console and we'll just wait uh, a little bit longer while it makes a connection. The payments API uh, is uh, looking for uh, the Redis instance in GCP. So 
there we go. Everything's healthy at the moment. If I refresh and reload uh, my front end, I can see that the application is functioning and I can order a coffee and then process a payment. So uh, yeah, just, just to summarize, you know, console provides this capability to uh, connect services uh, securely across any clouds um, and different platforms to provide this consistent approach to uh, security, traffic management, and observability across uh, different type of workloads, whether it's uh, virtual machines, external services, uh, even bare metal, microservices. Um, this is uh, some of the capabilities at a high level and quickly. I'll stop there. To see if there's any questions. Thank you.